Good evening. I'm going to call our uh, select board meeting to order. Uh, today is Tuesday, May 30th, 2023, 6 p.m. Um, we are in the lower level of the Rutland Public Library. Um, we're streaming on Zoom and being recorded for live television now as well, I think, as well as recording for our YouTube and cable channels at later broadcast. Um, can we please open by pledging allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we'll move right into. Um, we have Sergeant Troy Chauvin here um, from our police department, and he wants to give us a small, uh, short presentation. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Uh, Sergeant Troy Chauvin, um, many of you know that I'm in the International Guard as well. And eight years ago, I had the best midlife crisis that anyone could ever have. I enlisted in our beloved United States Air Force at 39 years old, went to basic training, and I kind of put my whole life, family, and this job that I work here in Rowan on hold for a bit of time. Um, I've got the strongest support from my peers, from this town, the town's people, and I've always had the support of my chief. I just want to take five minutes and recognize him and this town and say thank you. You know, for the nights that I, I call him and be like, hey, I need to leave early. I have to be at the base for five o'clock in the morning. Is it okay if I spot the schedule around? Is it okay if I do this? Hey, guess what? We're going to Germany next week. You get to drop everything. And uh, I've had the best support from this town. So Chief Monaco, if you would. Well, cheers. If you could. <laughs> On behalf of the Massachusetts Air National Guard and my unit, the, the 104th Fighter Wing, I just want to say thank you and uh, I present this to you in the town. So. Thank you very much. Um, so it's, been, uh, it's been my pleasure to support you throughout this. Um, we're proud of you, and we appreciate everything you do for both the town and the United States of America. So Thank we will continue to support you going forward and uh, any other employees that we have that are in the Guard and Reserve. So. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Does the board want a picture with? Sure, why don't we do it? Yeah, if, if, listen, I don't want to take up too much time, but that would be great. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Um, Paul can sit if you want. Oh, all right. How's that? Say. Pick, a spot. <laughs> Pick a spot. Pick a spot. Just keep the town of Rutland. Oh, that's important. Let me move my coffee down. Chief, why don't you get in the shot yourself up here, uh, front and center over here. Tighter here. Yeah. Tighter here, tighter here, tighter there. We could use one more on this <laughs> end. Is all about balance, balancing out the parts. Is it balanced? No, it's not. We're off balance. All oh, right, hold it's on. Good. Hold on, now. <laughs> okay. Oh, now I gotta take more. I don't blame you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is over there. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Half. Oh. No. Thank you. <laughs> A few times. Yeah. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What's going on? What's going on? So we um, can move into the approval of Treasury warrant and payroll. All right. I make a motion to approve Treasury Warrant 23-24 and Payroll 23-PW24. Is there a second? Second. Any comments, questions, anything of note, Austin? No. We'll do a roll call. 
Mr. Sakdanai. <clears throat> Matson, with the exception of the payroll access committee, Ledger cable I. access committee. <laughs> Ledger I. Galvin excluding safe place. Waitman I. Um, and motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve meeting minutes May 15th, 2023. Second. Any comments, questions, edits? No. Go ahead. I'm good. Second and I. I'll say. Yes. Yes. All set, yes. Okay. Oh, Wait. yay. Yes. <laughs> Ledger I. Galvin I. And Waitman I. Um, I added a new part to the agenda, just remarks from the chair. Um, I wanted to, to start by taking this opportunity to have a moment of silence. Um, the town lost a dear former selectman, lieutenant in the fire department, um, very involved in all elections. Um, and a true pillar of Rutland community, uh, Ken Lowe, passed away over the weekend. So if we can um, take a couple minute, a brief moment of silence, his family's here, um, offer our condolences for the loss, their loss, as well as the loss to the town. So if we can just take a few moments of silence. And I think services and everything have been announced. Um, the week is Friday, I believe, at Miles. So I'm sure that that'll make its rounds for anybody that's listening here or um, on on broadcast. So again, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm Thank sorry you. for the town's loss. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I also would like to take the opportunity to thank everyone that was involved in the Mor Memorial Day Parade and activities, um, especially the American Legion Post 310 for organizing it, the Rutland Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, Daisies, for their integral parts in running the activities of the morning, um, Public Safety um, and DPW for their support, um, and all the residents, families, friends that came out to reflect with us. Um, the morning is one of my favorites in town. It's somber, peaceful, um, and just a, a true um, kind of time to reflect. So I appreciate all the work that goes into that. Um, I also would like to thank the Cable Advisory Committee for working to capture the morning's activities. So I believe that that should be posted um, online in the coming days. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that yesterday was also the third anniversary of Detective Sanji's passing. Um, so it's been a, a reflecting time in town, I think. So, um, for the new board, I wanted to just kind of go over the way I envision things working a little bit, um, especially when it comes to agenda setting and um, some of the um, responsibilities that I would like to see go more through the town administrator office. Um, I've moved away from having two board members in agenda meetings, um, and I'm going to ask that all agenda requests go through Tamika and Austin as well as me, not to be a gatekeeper, but more so that we can try to time when things are are placed. Um, if we know that something's coming up or that there's a little bit of legal background that needs to be done or additional information, that we have that um, time to place things accordingly. Um, I also want to have time to ensure that we have time to have open meeting conversations before having a vote on something. So if there are additional questions or comments, feedback, we have the opportunity to, to send those back with the town administrator and come back at another meeting to, to have additional conversation. Um, I've had experience on a few different iterations of select board, and I'm hopeful that going kind of back to this method provides opportunity for all members to have agenda input. Um, really, it's I want to have input from everyone as to <laughs> things that's important to them um, to go on the agenda. Um, and I realize that it's not always easy for all of us to make time during the day to do an agenda setting. Um, I also, I think some of you have noticed, have asked to not have the standing expectation that department heads 
attend our meetings and provide uh, biweekly updates. Um, I've heard from a number of department heads that sometimes felt they didn't have a lot of information to give us with the town administrator. I would like to see that come through. I also think that there will be times, I would like to see their updates kind of come through the department head or through the town administrator. I do think that there will be time that we will invite department heads in, especially going into the new budget season with the expanded um, roles and responsibilities and everything, um, that there will be opportunity to have um, them come in. If there's something big going on, I'm more than happy. They're always about welcome. I don't want to close that door to them. They're more than welcome to come if they feel they want to. <laughs> I also don't want the expectation that they have to be here every third meeting or whatever it has been. Um, I think I would like to see, I would like to ask that we as a board are respectful of the TA's roles as personnel director and afford Austin and the department head space to pr perform their work without constant board member influence. I think historically uh, department head meetings and such have been absent of board of BOS members. And I think there's value to providing space for staff um, to have conversation without some of the political oversight. Um, I understand that we have a department head who's a member of the board and a department head who is a spouse of a member of the board. So there's going to be some blurring of lines there anyway, but I just wanna to try to keep things as unblurred as possible. Um, and if we have, if any of us have concerns or hear of concerns regarding staff or personnel or anything, that we have private conversations with Austin and see um, as head of personnel, I'm hopeful that we can streamline some of that. And as we look towards July and have a, the potential for an HR support um, in some capacity, that that will streamline a little bit differently. Um, I'm happy to have the, the communication open. And if people feel very strongly, I'm willing to reconsider. But I think that right now I'd like to, to try moving this forward um, in this manner. Um, I also just wanted to reiterate, reiterate as we have the potential for hiring that um, per the town administrator um, <coughs> job description, uh, the town administrator is the, the appointing authority for all employees under the board's select board's jurisdiction, except for fire department personnel. And uh, the town administrator is also the appointing authority for the department heads, except for the fire chief. All of this is subject to confirmation by the select board. So I just wanted to be transparent that that's my expectation that um, we empower the town administrator to, <clears throat> to do some of this. Um, as always, I'm open to conversation and dialogue. I think as we move into our goal setting, which we will talk about in our agenda also um, for this board in Austin um, and the 2024 budget, um, we'll make adjustments as kind of things arise. But that's just, I just wanted to open with that, my vision for how things are going to work um, and my rationale for why I think that's how I'd like to see things go. Um, is there anyone to the yeah. chair? Yeah. Um, we're not going to be asking board board department heads to come here, and I think that's a great idea. Why waste our time if we don't need to? Particularly when we have Austin working for us. Uh, but is does that mean that we're, it's still acceptable to attend department head meetings when he has all his department head meetings? We can sit in on those. I think those are open meetings, right? I think historically, select board members have not attended department head meetings. Um, it's, it provides an opportunity for Austin to have conversations uh, with department heads about the the board's goals and objectives, as well as any concerns that the board or the department heads may have with how those those buffer up against some of their challenges as they do their work. So I would like to see them be as select board free as as possible and provide that that opportunity to have space for them to do that work without any sort of the political influence so just sitting there and watching you're saying is not a good idea yeah. I, I would disagree with that okay so i think that there's a lot of unsaid things that happen just having one of us can you guys on zoom mute please Okay. 
So I think having, um, we first of all, we need to be very mindful because we have one member who is already a department head in there. We need to be very mindful that we're not creating any sort of quorum issues by having a second and third member attend. And I think that there's a lot of value to, to not having even the sight of a select board member or an elected official can sometimes change conversation or or the freedom of information flowing. I, as a, as a board member, I will um, look to you on that and say, fine, except I will see how it goes. Okay. All right? Yep. And if I need to, I'll bring it up at a okay. later time. Yep. And I understand that you have that concern, so that's fair enough. Okay. Yeah, through the chair. I, I, no, I respect what you're saying, Harry, but... You know, we have a new town administrator. We hired him to manage our people. And I think, I, I don't think it's, I think it comes off as micromanaging if we kind of are always watching them. And I don't think there's any purpose in that, unless we have to, unless we have a reason to. Mm -hmm. So I agree, I hear what you're saying, but I don't think there's any need for that right now. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I will only wear one hat at one meeting. Okay. This is the select board meeting. I'll wear a select board hat. If it's a cable committee meeting, I'll wear a cable committee hat. So much for that idea. Okay. <coughs> um, public comment. Mr. Williams, you're here. <laughs> I know that that means that you have to have some comments. <laughs> I'm saying to myself, you know, I came here for the poll thing, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Dick Williams, 35 Overlook Road. Um, but I do want to ask, when Joe Buckley was running the show, <clears throat> he was doing a lot of work on Wachusett Street. He was trying to get it ready to get upgraded. How is that? Is that going to still be coming fast? Because it's, that road is pretty, pretty terrible. <clears throat> the... The Princeton side of Wachusett? Towards the Princeton side, yeah, yes. that side. Yeah. Uh, so I know that there's a Wachusett Street and a Wachusett Row. Uh, Wachusett Street. So is Wachusett Street the one that goes into Princeton? Is that, that is correct? correct? Yeah, so we're, um, we're actually, so we're looking to, to expend some of our winter recovery assistance program funds. We've got another, about another month to spend that. Uh, we're actually going out to bid in a couple of days to get that work done. Uh, so essentially, that's relining the culvert, fixing some of the, uh, the the culvert damage that was done on the roadway, and then paving as much as we can from the uh, Princeton line um, up towards uh, what is that? 68. 68. Yeah. Um, so that should be um, that should be getting up and going in a couple of weeks. Um, it's a fast timeline to get that done, but you, really the principal thing is to get that culvert relined and fixed, and then the roadway there, and then like I said, getting as much as we can with the funds that are available. We've got a uh, just about 150,000 remaining to be able to get that work done. Okay. So, so we our uh, consultant Weston and Sampson is uh, is managing that pro project for us. Good. If there's grindings, is there any chance that Overlook Road, the the worst part of Overlook Road, can be at least filled with the grindings? Sure, I can certainly um, I can certainly I, ask I, and see. I, I, I know that we're reusing, you know, some of the grindings on uh, on the uh, tip project on Palma Gusset. Um, so certainly that we could take a look and see if we can use that for overlook. You said yes. Okay. And I expect to see you drive up there, so you know what. <laughs> yeah, I may have already. I ruined my car tires a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Austin. Anyone else here for public comment? Anyone on Zoom for public comment? All right, we have a few public hearings in front of us. Um, so I will open the first public hearing for the National Grid poll hearing for, on Wachusett Street. Uh, do we have National Grid? We should have a representative on Zoom. Okay. Anyone on Zoom for National Grid? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yep, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Will Fontaine. I uh, represent National Grid, and uh, this uh, this poll petition is for uh, two new houses that are going up, uh, 158 and 156, Massachusetts Street, and uh, we need to run a full line down 
down the driveway. Um, right now, the way the current the existing poles are aligned with the driveway, it's not very feasible. Um, we would run into aerial trespassing issues, so I uh, would just want to put in this mid-span pole so we can go straight down the driveway. If I'm looking at the map appropriately, uh, the lot 158 is actually the lot coming off of <coughs> East County, but you're running the poles from Wachusett? Yes, yeah, so the... Uh, there's a, an easement that, so the driveway is actually going through number 160, once okay. you use it, and it's going in back. Um, there's, at least as far as when I was last there, there's no access from no. East County Road. Um, that is correct. So it's just this driveway, and you can see on the map there's a driveway and utility easement going through 160. Um, and so that's that's where the pole, pole line is going to go. Joe Buckley did review this application prior to his departure, and he had no concerns. I think that was going to be my next question, if Joe or Weston Sampson or anybody has. Mm -hmm. Joe had reviewed this one because we received this back in April. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board for National Grid? Questions or comments from the public for National Grid? Yes. I can do, sorry, I can do that, right, to make it during public hearing, and then if yes, we Yes, as long as you haven't closed the hearing, absolutely. If anybody had driven out by there and just below where the poles are going to be is this tree and the lines are rubbing against it and I feel that National Grid should take that tree down and be um, a little bit more advanced <laughs> before something yeah. goes wrong. Sorry, through the chair. Where is that in relation On to what? The... it Street? Yeah. Well, and it's <laughs> below the driveway towards Route 68. Okay. All right. So, Dick, is that kind of where pole 37 is on? Yes, it's just below, just, just, uh, matter of fact, the picture shows a pole right there. With right. A, that's 37. Uh, Will, are these lines going to be underground? Uh, the lines going down the driveway will be overhead. Will be what? They, they will be overhead. They'll be overhead. Okay. Because it says... Mm -hmm. Well, I know a few years ago, Grid went through and did a lot of tree work and everything. Dick gave us a picture. I know you're on Zoom and you probably can't see, but there is concern with that pole on um, the, tr I think it's probably pole 37, um, which is not one of the poles, but it, it's feeding into the new pole with a tree right up a, uh, against the wires. Um, is there any plan for, for Grid to look at the trees in this area before or during installation? Uh, not as of yet, but I can add that into the job um, and make a note for forestry to go out there and take a look. And uh, I've, did he say he wanted the tree taken down or just trimmed? Um, I, I'm not sure what I mean, the state of the tree is, if it's dead or or what. Um, yeah, looking, it looks like quite a large tree based on the picture. And so I'm not sure what, I think it would, based on this picture, it looks like it might need to come down, but I don't know for sure. I don't want to misspeak. I would kind of leave it up to forestry, I think. Mm -hmm. And similar for the tree, the, the lines going through that driveway easement, I know um, some of that property is fairly wooded, so just to make sure that there's adequate clearance, please. Uh, yes, there, there should be adequate clearance. I'm looking at, uh, I'm actually looking at Google Street View right now. Um, Yeah, it does look like that tree would need to come down. I don't know who lives at that uh, at that house. Um, it looks like the tree is on their land. I can't quite tell, obviously, from uh, from the picture I have. But uh, so we might need to get their permission first. Um, so that might be an issue with that. But uh, it's definitely something we can uh, we can look at. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dick, for bringing that to our attention also. Any other questions or concerns about the polls and the work? If not, then I will entertain a motion to close the hearing. Um, Paul moved it. So moved, yep, second. <clears throat> and then um, at the pleasure of the board, we can ask for approval 
contingent upon the, the, the tree, tree, the tree work. Is that my own? My only hesitation, Leah, is if that tree is on private property and the people do not agree <coughs> to having it taken down. Oh. I just hate to see that you right. know them not be able to install the pole as a result. That's my only thought. My yeah. question too. Yeah. How does that through the chair? How, yeah. how he said there's an easement for these poles, right? Would that be included? <laughs> in that area of the easement, or is it just literally the pole <coughs> itself? So I think looking at the, if this is on this map, it's not technically one of the new poles that are on the easement. Mm -hmm. So I think it's closer to that. That's on the uh, separate property there. Yeah, oh, the pole okay. 37 okay. on 124, I think, if I'm thinking of where the pole is. Um, so, <coughs> What's the pleasure of the board to approve and ask that they work with the work with to look have this tree looked at? Mm -hmm. So where um, is this tree located? Just be right right across from where you live. You, I feel the gentleman who lives in the old Maddie Smith's house. No, I I sorry about that. Sixty Wachusett Street. Pardon? I own one hundred and sixty Wachusett Street, so I own the property. <coughs> <laughs> so it's the pole closer to 68 yep. that would feed into the poles going on the easement. If you want to look at the picture? He's got a picture of the tree. If you want to, you come can come up. So this is the tree and the pole. And I think it's this pole here. So it's the pole that would then feed into. Okay, so you're talking about a that's on 124 is probably so. okay. Uh, understood. Thank you. Yep. And where was that? Is there where is this copy of the? This, I never seen a copy of this. Uh, it's posted on the town's website on the I select board page. It. It's on the select board page on the website under news and announcements on the right hand side, and it says National Grid Pole here in Wachusett Street. Okay. I'll check again. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, through the chair, clarification. So we have to get, he has to get approval from the landowner to cut the tree down. So if the landowner doesn't approve. What are the options? Yeah. Well, and I think one of my questions is, is this two separate issues a little bit that this, we can approve this, this easement and everything mm -hmm. um, for the, the landowners that we could appro approve the easement for the work here, and then this may be a separate issue to bring to, to National Grid's attention. I know historically they go through every couple years, I think, and do some tree work and everything, but um, I think the past couple years, uh, winter has done some more damage, so they may be behind a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't want to speak for National Grid. but And Leah, if I may, um, just on behalf of the residents that are purchasing in there, um, I've been in conversations with them quite a bit, and this is very time sensitive for them because of the closing date, and the hearing was actually pushed because there was another poll that National Grid had to move before Joe Buckley would approve this one to be put in, and that was taken care of. Um, so just on their behalf, they really, really like yeah. to see that this will be approved tonight, if at all possible. All right, makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, so a motion to approve the uh, easement. I make a mo I'd like to make a motion to approve National Grid's poll easement on Wachusett Street. Second. Do we want to say the mid span thirty seven fit? You have. Oh, I've I have the information. I was just going to say, can we change easement to installation? Installation? Okay. Yes, please. Make a motion to approve National Grid Pole installation on Wachusett Street. Second. <clears throat> Comments, questions, concerns? Uh, Roll call. Should we mention Pole 3750 just to be specific? We can. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. We can mention that. Which one was 3750? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh. All right, so I make a motion to approve National Grid Pole uh, installation, Pole 3750, yeah. on Wachusa Street. Second. <laughs> okay. Hey, no. <laughs> that would be thorough. <laughs> Questions, comments? All right, we'll do roll. Oh, um, just a comment on not losing sight of that 
437, is there something else we need to note to follow up with National Grid on that? I have a representative that I work with at National Grid, and I'm happy to reach out to her. She's been very helpful, and she should be able to get somebody to put that on their radar. And I think it's on Will's radar also, so between... Yeah, but, between the, yeah we can. Okay. Thank you for making sure that it stays on our radar. Excuse me, if I could. Um, if uh, either the neighbor who brought this um, up tonight or, or the town themselves, uh, they can, uh, if they want to reach out to... Um, to the 1-800 number, usually uh, if you just open up a an inquiry work request, uh, somebody will, you know, from our office will take a look at it. If it's not myself, I think I know the other guy who just took over the area for, for stuff like this. So um, somebody, if, if a work request is open, somebody will be out there, you know, fairly shortly to, to look at that and then do up a, uh, do up a work order for it. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and a second. I'll take roll call. Second and aye. Matt and aye. Ledger aye. Galvin aye. Whiteman aye. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you. You guys have a good evening. Too. Thanks, you too. I will op now open the public hearing for a common vehicular license for Family Farms, Inc. at 87 Main <coughs> Street. And um, he is online. Okay. Who is? Uh, Nirav, the owner. Oh, Nirav. Okay. Nirav, can you hear us? Yes. Hi, everyone. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. So we have in front of us uh, your common Vic license for Family Farms. And Tamika, everything. Oh. Go ahead. Yes, so <clears throat> we just acquired uh, honey farms in February, and there was a honeydew, uh, which which kind of served a lot, a lot of uh, sandwiches, coffee, to the community. Uh, due to the need of <clears throat> our own kitchen, we couldn't continue with the honeydew, but we want to start our own um, family farms cafe so we can continue to serve the community with. Uh, uh, something local that we can make uh, and sell coffees and sandwiches. There is a seating area about like uh, 8 to 12 uh, seating area where, where people just hang out. It's a mix of convenience store and cafe uh, where like um, uh, next door hardware customers come down and have their lunch and morning coffees and others. So uh, that's what we, our intent is. Thank you. Tamika, all the permits and authorizations have been... Yes, yep, so it went through the internal review process, all the departments approved it, they submitted all the necessary <coughs> paperwork and their fee, so they are good to go. Awesome. Does the board have any questions for Narav or Austin and Tamika? Is, is the cafe going to be basically operating kind of the way Honeydew did for their donuts, and then they offered sandwiches and all that stuff, so that's what you're trying to keep the flavor of the of the place? Yes, so <clears throat> we're going to have uh, New England coffee, um, local, uh, local or nearby donut supplies, uh, but similar sandwiches, smoothies, um, soft serve ice cream, some hard ice cream. So just keeping that cafe kind of a feeling where we can serve the community. Okay, thank you. You're right. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public? Does the board have anything else? No, no, no. Set. Okay, hearing none, I will. Do I, I, I brain fart? Do I need a motion to close the hearings? Yes. Okay. No, mm -hmm. we do one for closing and one for approving. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve the Common Vic license. Oh, we have to close. Oh, sorry, sorry. Have to close the make a motion to <laughs> close the public hearing on <coughs> Common Vic. Second. Second. Now. Roll call. Sackman I. Matt's and I. Ledger I. Galvin I. Whiteman I. And then a motion to approve the Common Vic license. I'd like to make a motion to approve the Common Vic license for Family Farms Incorporated, 87 Main Street. Well, Second. What questions, comments? All right. Sackman I. Matt's and I. Ledger I. Galvin I. Whiteman I. 
Thank you, Narav, for coming on and explaining to us your plans. I appreciate it and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I will now open the public hearing for a class two auto dealer license, BRZ Auto Sales Inc. at 175 Barry Paxton Road. And Sean is here for that. And Mr. McLaughlin. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Do you want to give us an overview of, of your... Okay. Sean McLaughlin, 175 Barry Paxton Road. Um, Proposing to do an used auto car sales. And Tamika, this has gone through. I know this was a an update to the zoning bylaws at town meeting a few years a year ago or so. Get back in the um, fall. That allowed made it allowable by special permit, I think. That is correct. And now everything all the requirements for that special permitting have been met through planning. Um, and all the departments and everything? Yes, so they have their special permit through the planning board. All the departments have approved it. Um, there are some conditions on the license itself that you'll see um, in relation to the special permit, which um, has a maximum limit of 30 vehicles on the site. Um, and the trailer, once open to the public, will have to be inspected and approved by the building inspector. But for the purposes of the operation, he did, it, he did approve it for the purpose of the license. So everything else is in order. And the fees have been collected and, and yep, the fees and all the required paperwork have been collected. <coughs> thank you. Is there comments, questions from the board? Questions? Yeah. Mr. McLaughlin, thanks for coming here tonight. Uh, I took a look at the property. Uh, you've got quite a bit there that you've leased to him, so I hope that is very prosperous for him right there on 122. But I noticed in the lease agreement, you've leased it to him as is. Who's responsible to take care of the property? Uh, he will be taking care of it. He's uh, going to be putting a, a container he's renting for an office. He's going to be putting there. And, and as far maintaining the property. And, and as far as keeping the appearance and everything else, that's his responsibility. Yes. And then, okay. And of course, I want it to be nice because I live. Oh, right I'm, there. Sure you, <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Any questions or comments from the public? Right. No, nope, hearing none, I will take a motion to close the hearing. Make a motion to close public hearing on class two auto license. Second. Second. <clears throat> Roll call. Roll call to close. Roll call. Second and I. Matt's and I. Roger I. Yab and I. White and I. And I will take entertain a motion <coughs> for the approval. I will make a motion to approve the Class Two Auto Dealer License for BRZ Auto Sales Incorporated on One Seventy Five Barry Paxson Road, Rutland. Second. Questions, comments from the board. I will take a roll call. Second, I. Matt's and I. Roger, I. Galvin, I. Whiteman, I. Thank you. Thanks for all the work and everything that you've done with Thank you, boys, special. and have a good evening. Okay. Moving into the town administrator update. Great. Well, good evening. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just want to start off by echoing your, your comments about Memorial Day. I want to um, thank the volunteers and organizers. Uh, it was my first Memorial Day in Rutland. And um, while not my first Memorial Day celebration or, or remembrance ceremony, I think it was the best. Uh, there's something that Rutland does very well, and that's celebrating, but also remembering. Um, and it was a wonderful ceremony, so I just want to thank those that um, were involved in organizing that, uh, that day. Um, town staff, um, we are closing out this uh, fiscal year, getting ready to close the books and start a new one. So between uh, transfers and um, and just sort of getting the affairs in order to uh, to get ready for the audit. We are uh, we're looking like we're in pretty good shape, um, and we'll obviously have a, a more comprehensive report for the board and finance committee um, in the next uh, next few months. Our recreation department is is um, getting into the the fun season, if you will. Um, a lot of summer programming is going on between summer camp starting and in, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the community pool is opening uh, June 23rd, um, uh, 1 to 7 p.m., so there's a lot going on uh, across town, especially uh, especially downtown. 
Um, so between staffing up and just getting those programs up and running, uh, looking forward to, uh, to seeing everyone celebrating. Um, I want to congratulate the board and the town of Rutland for um, their fourth uh, best practice grant through the Community Compact Program. We applied um, for a grant to uh, upgrade our, our town website, and we received uh, $30,000 from that program for the uh, best practice program to upgrade the website, but also to assist town departments with developing a communications plan and strategy uh, for town departments and boards and committees to follow. Um, so we received a, a nice letter from the Lieutenant Governor congratulating us, and I just want to congratulate the board for, uh, for that work. And then also, uh, just an FYI, uh, between the, uh, the Pomagusset project, uh, the DPW has also started a, a quick project behind Town Hall. Um, if you've been uh, behind Town Hall or, um, or just uh, on the ball field or on the walking track, you know, especially during the wet season, uh, there's some water issues down there. So uh, DPW is installing some drainage to alleviate some of the, some of the water issues and get that um, connected to the, to the Pomagusset project. I want to thank MassDOT. They um, increased their scope a little bit and, and installed some drainage up Memorial Drive for us, uh, which we were planning to do. So we didn't have to pay for that, save some, uh, save some materials. And um, we're beginning the work on that to uh, alleviate some of the water issues there. Should take about a week or so uh, to get that done. Um, and that's it. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for the update on the community compact. That's a lot of your work. So mm -hmm. thank you yeah, for that. Thank you for doing that. And I'm excited to see that kind of come to realization throughout town, because I think that that's going to be a huge avenue um, to help get information out. So thank you and thank Tamika for that work, because it's really your off your offices that, that did that. So mm -hmm. thank you. Absolutely. And I'm happy to hear about the Memorial Field drainage stuff. I know that that was a, a project that's been on the, the radar, and I think we've allocated some funds at one point to address some of that to alleviate some of the ongoing damage that has been occurring from that. So it's nice to hear that we were able to fit it in to the tip a little bit also, and DPW picking it up because I know they're still short-staffed and thin, so to be able to fit that in. Thank you. Does the board have any questions or comments for Austin? Oh, I do have one more, actually. Sorry. This is the most exciting thing. I'm sorry. Um, We'll have a formal announcement on our uh, communication venues, but I just want to take this moment because you'll, especially because you'll see something in the next few days. Uh, Rutland, the town of Rutland was invited by the Worcester Red Sox to participate in their town takeover day. You may have seen something already on our town website, but there's this fancy flyer, and I know you can't see this on TV, uh, but we'll, we'll share this on our social media and website. Uh, really cool <coughs> event. Um, town of Rutland, town staff, and just members of the community are invited to attend a, a Woo Sox game at Polar Park. Um, prices are a little bit lower than they normally are, uh, but what's really great is they um, will donate a portion of ticket sales to a local charity, and I believe the charity is Hope Lives Here, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. You'll have so you'll see some town staff um, throwing out the first pitch. I believe there's a Rutland resident uh, singing the national anthem as well, so it's an exciting event. That is Thursday, July 27th. Um, there's a special link that we'll share on our um, on our website and social media for you to be able to buy your tickets. But I think you can also call the, the Woo Sox um, ticket office as well and mention Rutland Day. So should be exciting. So just want to promote that. Thank you. Yes. I want to thank Austin for putting through that memorial field for years and years. DPW has been coming through CIPC to get work done, do this and that, and unfortunately the priority didn't fit the ranking for where our committee works. So uh, it, it's been needed. So appreciate that you were able to get that done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I do have a question just from my own knowledge. What br briefly plans for the website overhaul? What is a lot. What um, so. Um, I think the town website um, does a pretty good job overall or generally for housing our information. However, it's not the, the most accessible um, platform. So we're looking to, to make some accessibility improvements, the overall design, making it a little bit more modernized, um, taking advantage of some additional modules that our platform offers, but we're just not taking advantage of. So I won't name them all, but you think of like, re you know, report a pothole or mm -hmm. um, multimedia, things like that. So we can take advantage of a lot more of the features. Um, but most importantly, it's on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I'm pretty good with technology, but even I logging in, mm -hmm. uh, look at that, and it definitely mm -hmm. is, I think it's older than me, yeah. um, <laughs> which I know isn't saying much, but um, it's just upgrading <laughs> the overall experience um, on the front end, but also the back end for town staff. Um, it also enables all of our departments to access the website platform and make their own updates. Uh, I've already heard from, from some town departments that are interested in transferring over and joining our website as well. Um, I was going to so, say, does that include the rec department's yes. site? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so hopefully you'll see a, a refreshed experience on the front end, but then also some greater efficiencies on the back end for, for town staff okay. as well. Is there a timeline for? So it, it's, uh, it takes about four months. Um, okay. We've been assigned a project manager from, uh, from our website vendor. It'll take about four months for them to work with town staff, identify a design, and work through it, and then um, you know some training as well for for staff as well. Okay. So, could I through the chair? Could I make a recommendation? I don't know if you've already made this, but once it's up and going, maybe have a couple of training sessions for the community as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. this senior population, maybe at the senior center or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I think it's that's a great idea. I want to promote. And you know, we're going to spend yeah. some time and, and obviously free grant money from people um, promoting this new website. So a little bit of a, a campaign, if you will, to get that out there and, and let people know that we have a new website that they can access. Mm -hmm. a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And I think we have talked about it in the past, having the opportunity to have a, a computer or two at, at the senior center and at the library, even town buildings, that people, in addition to coming in to do the permitting and everything, could come in, stop in, and report whatever mm -hmm. or pool report or, or whatever. So... Um, I know that that's been kind of a conversation on the periphery as well. Through the chair. <laughs> um, how many trips you taken around town to find out, you know, what Rutland's about? Um, a lot. Um, every time I, I, you know, go grab a bite to eat or just need to get out of my chair, I've taken taken a lot of rides around town. Uh, if you can get somebody, I I had to ask one time. I, EMS fella over here, I know him very well, and he drives around, but he had some ideas when I started asking him about, is there some roads in town that either need to be fixed for ambulances or we need a new road, and, and I was astonished. I think that's something that, get a moment, and if they have a moment or something like that, ask them, <coughs> if they, hey, take me around and show me where some of this, uh, the hang-up might be, you know, for trying to get uh, people out in a hurry. Just, just a yeah, that's uh, great. My so actually, my first day, um, Joe Buckley took me around, and I think we quite literally drove, if not every road, close to every road. We hit every town line, turned around. He took me through the DCR property, some of the roads out there as well. Um, I think I went on all the dirt and gravel roads, and certainly they need some work and need some help. Um, but even some of our regular maintained town roads are, um, you know, paved roads are. Um, are in, are in tough seat. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I will say on the on that front, um, the Mass Municipal Association has always been an, an advocate for increased Chapter 90 funds. Um, there's, you know, hopefully some promising news <coughs> on that front. It's certainly not enough. Um, so at some point, we'll have to come up with a, and I think there's already been a lot of good work on at least developing an index on our status of our roads, but some sort of funding mechanism to make sure we're keeping up with this as well is, is something to, to look into as well. Thanks for the update, Austin. Moving on to old business, we have ARPA update. Um, included in our packet is a update of the current ARPA funds um, that have been allocated thus far um, and what is remaining. Um, we had a few kind of requests come in and I asked for some of them to be held because a lot of them had gone in through um, the state to see if money was, we would get some of that money on the state side. So I had asked to hold some of those to see how that played out, hopefully but through June or beginning of July. Um, I also wanted to have some um, opportunity with us as a board to do goal setting before we start spending a lot of the, the remaining ARPA. Um, we had a request from the previous board that had come in for free cash, um, and there was no free cash. And that board, I think, had kind of alluded to the fact that there would be ARPA money, most likely ARPA money available, and it should be come in to the new board as an ARPA request um, from the fire brigade to do paving um, in the driveway um, 
the extent the library extension driveway up to the old fire station. Um, I think some of that work has been done already with the Boy Scout Eagle project, um, and I think that maybe <coughs> there was um, hope that the ARPA request could go forward to finish mm -hmm. that piece out. Um, that was not something that was included in the state um, the state ask. Um, without sounding mean, I would like to ask that we table that motion for the ARPA funds for the fire brigade until we reach our goals and establish just where our money needs to be spent. I mean, I'm for finishing it, but I think the board needs to get its goals straightened out first before we disperse. And I had asked for two items to be put on there, so I'm actually pulling my own items in order to find out where we want to go first. Yeah, I, through the chair, I agree 100%. I, I, you know, it's, it's this, you know, the playground right now, I've heard so many complaints about the playground. Kids are, kids are getting hurt up there. Mm -hmm. And I, I, not to say that this project isn't important, but... We have to start focusing this on money for projects that benefit the whole mm -hmm. town, not just individual, you know, groups or clubs or whatever. And, and the again, with me, it's a lot about the timing usually, mm -hmm. and that the timing's wrong right now. The town has given us a heck of an opportunity with this override. I don't want to blow it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so right now, I I would be same as Harry. I'd say just the time's not right for me. So I. I, I want to reiterate, I had asked for everything else to be held because we are in conversations with other pieces. This was kind of a holdover from our previous yeah, board. Yeah. And I think some of the work had kind of been been done with the assumption that that the new board would, would allocate. So that's why I had asked to have that conversation with this new board mm -hmm. um, to see because um, I think the Eagle project is wrapping up and there's concern that with heavy rains and everything, that stuff may wash away. Um, I don't want to speak for the brigade. I think Tommy and Randy are here. Um, but that was my my rationale for leaving this one and asking to have the others. Um, I could get into some issues that if I've just been made aware of, I would rather not. And I would just rather say that I would like my motion to table this until a future date be moved on the motion. Second. I, I also agree. I, I think there's, it's it's one thing to say, you know, $14,000 here, but then you get another request for $16,000 there, and it, it all adds up, and I agree. I think we need to collectively look at what we need to do and what that priorities are. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, the, the playground has lots of yeah, complaints. It's an I, I know that the schools, a lot of that comes through the school committee with some of the capital improvements there, but the sidewalks and the parking lots in the schools are absolutely atrocious. Mm -hmm. We have a new ladder truck that the town is going to have right. to fund a portion of coming up as Not well. Not to mention all the roads we just mentioned. I mean, there's a lot yes. to do. So there's a lot I, to do. Not to yeah. say we can't down the road do this. I, I just agree. right now. I think I agree mm -hmm. with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just add, so just so you have, for your knowledge, the road over there is, is town, town road. It's not our road. It's in front of the work that we've done in the old fire station and then the pavers out in the front. So that front, but we're just doing that. We're doing it as volunteers to see that it gets done so that the overall project is, and it looks the way it should look over there, just so you know that. So... I don't want you to, you know, the town still owns the building, but we've done all the work there. So the road is a section of town road to be done. But the town can't use the building, right? Absolutely, they can. What's it used for? Well, the fire brigade uses it for storing of the equipment that we own. Um, we use it for our meetings. The Boy Scouts use it. The American Legion meets there. It will be available for various committees to meet there. That's been the goal ever since we started doing that project. Mm -hmm. um, it is a town building, and we remain a town building for the next, hopefully, we're hoping that the next several hundred years is there, and that's why we've been doing the work and been doing the work to the way it should be done. Um, Chairman, I, I, I don't want to get off track of the original motion, so if we could come back to that. No, and, I, and I, again, just, I just want you to know I, that. I thank all. you for that because I looked at it, and 
Yes, it needs to be done, but I don't know if ARPA funds are the way to do it, town funds. So we haven't reached our goals yet, but I do. I appreciate your comment, though. Thank you on that one. So I think we have a motion and a second mm -hmm. to table, um, and we'll add this into our goal setting. I think we'll have the previous ARPA requests as well. We have a motion and a second. Do you have something? Well, it has to do with the ARPA funds in regards to the RDIC. Um, we were not included in the override budget. Our budget was not included in the override budget. And my understanding was that the ARPA funds right there, but to to that. Now, you know, I understand that there are grants that we're seeking, but there's no guarantee that those grants are going to come. I would like to see our our money put in the opera to stay in the opera. If you approve it, you approve it. We we won't spend it until you know we'll agree to not spend it until such time as those grants are awarded. If they're awarded, we'll give it back. If not, we'll use it. You know, I I know most of this board um, uh, has heard this before, but you know to date the RDIC has generated put in the town coffers 1.9 million dollars in the bank. And by the time that project is done, when it's done, it'll be almost six million dollars. So we are a, a rev we have been a revenue generating uh, department, and I just think it's crazy to ignore what we bring, what we contribute to the town, and we've done that with no budget at all, zero, two hundred fifty dollars a year in <clears throat> um, secretarial fees. So I have. We have a motion and a second for this, so let's take this, and then I can address the ARPA, the overarching ARPA piece after. So a motion and a second to table this until after our goal setting, until essentially. Until time is necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> second and I. Matt's and I. Ledger I. Yeah, and I. Whiteman, aye. For the ARPA requests in general, I had asked for a number of things to be pulled off because they had gone through the state and wanting to have the conversation with the board as far as moving forward with the, the goal setting and everything. I know that economic development is a huge piece of town. The, the wants and the desires from, from the Sunday sessions, there was a lot of want for economic development. There was a lot of want for a lot of other things. So I... I asked to keep this on because it was a holdover from the previous board and should have maybe kept it lumped all together. As was the RDIC, though. The RDIC, that never came before us as a board, as to, to us, as select board. I came in front of the select board and discussed it on a couple of occasions. Uh -huh. I, I'm not here to debate it. It's, it. It really makes no difference to me. I see it as a missed opportunity. If you don't continue to support the RDIC, then the, the properties at the hospital are going to continue to deteriorate and the value of them are going to continue to go down. And I don't think anybody is here saying that we're not, going, we're not willing to have that conversation. Well, I'm not suggesting so, you are. I'm just making a statement of fact. I appreciate it. So moving forward, we're, we will hold ARPA until we have um, goal setting and everything. We do have an updated list um, as far as where the funds stand. Um, and I think that there were some pieces that had been put in in case, as placeholders, in case the override didn't pass, that would then come back out, I think. Is that correct, Austin? I believe so. So excuse me, is RDIC included in that ARPA list? We have your, we have not, not in this list, but we have your request that, along with a few other requests that we'll, we'll discuss. Yeah. Well, I don't understand how you make your list and what priorities. I just don't want it to get lost. That's all. And that's what's... Mike, those are allocations that have already been made. That's not upcoming. Okay. And Tamika is keeping a list of all the official requests that come in. Um, if Tamika's taking care of it, I'm <laughs> Um, we have yeah, we have a number of interdepartmental transfer requests. Are any of these copies um, repeats to make like the last time? Nope. Oh, so I got to read them all. Oh, huh? These are all new ones. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can't cheat tonight, huh? No. All right. So we'll start with, I'd like to make a motion to transfer uh, from account 001-135-5700 uh, from the town accountant other charges of uh, $31.92 to be transferred to account 001-135-5230 the town account financial software. Uh, this is for the annual software maintenance cost. Oh, the excuse me. The annual software maintenance cost was short by thirty-one dollars and ninety-one cents. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Questions, comments, concerns. <coughs> Roll call. Harry. Second and I. Matt and I. Roger I. Galvin I. Whitman I. The next one is, I would like to make a motion to transfer funds from account 001-145-5700, the Treasury Collector Other Expenses of $24.09, be transferred to account 001-145-5400, Treasury Collector Supplies, uh, Additional Needs with Office Supplies. Second. Second. Questions, comments, concerns? <coughs> Roll call, Harry. Second and I. Matt's and I. Ledger I. The Alvin I. Whitman I. I'd like to make a motion to transfer $419.83 from account 001-610-5200, the library purchased services, to be transferred into account 001-610-5400, dash zero 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 library supplies for additional office supplies, additional office supply needs. Questions, comments, or er, sorry, is there a second? Second. I just had it, Tamika, can you just double check that the account to be transferred into is the correct number because it looks like there might be an extra number to start on our copy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't sure. know what. Just double check. Should be a, a six one. Start with a six one zero. It's there's three. It's zero zero three zero. Yeah, Sorry, it's zero, just zero, the fund. Zero, that's okay. general fund. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Sorry, that was my only. It was weird. That's, yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none. Roll call. Harry. Sick man, I. Matt's and I. Ledger I. Yellow and I. White and I. I would like to make a motion to transfer. $38.30 from account 001-610-5200, library purchased services, to be transferred to account 001-610-5850-003, AIT number 11, 11 uh, 22, library chairs, uh, purchase of chairs slightly over anticipated costs. Is there a second? Second. Um, I have a question. <clears throat> I, this It's fine to transfer money into an article because the article was overspent. We need to close out the article. That's all right. Inflation on the chairs. <laughs> uh, any other questions, comments? <laughs> Hearing none, roll call Harry. Second and I. Matt's and I. Ledger I. Galvin I. Whiteman I. <laughs> Might run out of breath Can on you this do one. It? Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat here. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to make a motion, sort of, I go one each, just go down the line. Is that how it works? Yeah, I think it's from the last. Okay. So I make a motion for the amount of $19,050, 5000 of it to be transferred from account 001 158 5200. Dash zero zero zero, the tax title purchased services, four thousand fifty dollars to be transferred from account zero zero one dash five four three dash five seven seven zero dash zero 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 veterans benefits, ten thousand dollars to be transferred from account zero zero one dash nine four five dash five seven four zero dash zero 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 liberty insurance oh, liability excuse me liability insurance to be transferred to account 
001-914-5100-000 health insurance. And that is the FY23 health insurance budget was developed using the FY22 enrollment numbers plus one additional family enrollment. Enrollment was higher than anticipated, causing a shortage in the account. The five to one bills... Um, will be $75,961.57. The 6-1 bills uh, bill is estimated at $75,618.14. There will be a deposit from the, uh, what's that, Wachusett Regional School, School District. District for retirees of $16,988.16 to offset the shortfall. Is there a second? Second. Questions, comments? Yeah, we actually had a shortfall in there, but they're going to be making it up through the retiree account of the SRD. <coughs> I think a portion of it, yes. Yeah. A portion of it. Okay. But that's from the retiree account, not from the regular health insurance account. That's from their retiree account. Um, so there's also line items for retiree health insurance. Um, so I'm not sure which line item is coming from the school district where they're coming up with the 16,000, but, um, the retirees are paying their portion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so just, just to be clear as well, I mean, I think in terms of the way that we do our budgeting, um, I believe in our, in our budget that includes retirees as well. Is that correct, Karen? Um, it needs to be. yeah, um, so you know where I assume some of this some of this overage may have been some of the retiree health insurance overages as well. So costs associated with the school district, um, whether it's coming from their retirees line item. I mean, I'm just surprised that we got the money from them under that account. That's great. I'm not yeah. questioning in that at all. Yeah. I was just surprised yeah. that they had that account that they could give us some extra money for. Yep. I I think the deposits from the school teachers that were on the town for the regionalization, so we're still required to pay them. So that's what the money's coming back from the Wachusett Regional School District. It's not like it's extra funds. It's funds to cover the retirees that we have on our insurance. Okay. I was going to, I think okay. my understanding is that this is a normal yes. process a normal of, the, of the budget process, and it's just okay. that kind of like a almost like a COBRA payment, but it's that's not what it is, but it's kind of, it's normal business. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none. Second and I. That's an I. Roger I. Yeah, I'm not. Wait, I have to make a motion to transfer $127.75 from account 001-141-5200-000 the assessor purchased services to be transferred to account 001-141-5400-000 assessor supplies and it's for supply budget expended. Is there a second? Second. second. Questions, comments, concerns? We'll call Harry. Sackman I. Matt's and I. Major I. Galvin I. Whiteman I. I would like to make a motion to transfer $320 from account 001 543 5700 000 Veterans Services Other Charge to be transferred to account 001 543 5400 000 Veterans Services Supplies. Um, the pay, what is it? The pay the bill for the, to pay the bill, I'm supposed to say, <laughs> for the Memorial Day flags to central flagpole and flag dated 5 4 23. Is there a second? Okay. Questions, comments, concerns? <clears throat> we'll call Harry. Second and I. Matt's and I. Measure I. Yeah, but I. Wait, but I. Moving into new business, we have uh, applications for one-day liquor licenses for Milk Room Brewing Company uh, for 10 dates for concerts on the Common. I think the application is in our packet. Um, mm -hmm. 
everything has been received, Tamika. Yes. Um, and I know there had been conversation previously about extending the opportunity for other um, uh, vendors mm -hmm. on the concert on the common also. I'm not sure if we heard back. No, it was communicated to the events committee at the beginning of their charge that this year we wanted to ensure that equitability was given to all vendors and not exclusivity to just one. Um, but I have not heard anything other than that back from them. And this is what we have in front of us right now. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, I just wanted to know if there was any update. Um, any other, does the board have any questions, comments? Uh, through the chair? Yeah. Um, is this um, one day license? to include everything, food and alcohol, or just alcohol? Just wine and malt beverages. Just wine and malt beverages, okay. The Generally for the food trucks um, that come up or the vendors go through the Board of Health to get their sort of their um, peddler's license or whatever yeah. they, it's called. Yep. And um, only nonprofits are allowed to sell um, like spirits, hard alcohol. So anybody else is only able to sell wine and malt. My question, I guess, really goes to the meals tax. Yeah. Do we collect a meals tax? We don't on those types of events. You do. You pay taxes on that. I lied. Yeah. You do pay meals tax. We do. So we pay the is it six and six and a quarter plus the seventy point seventy five percent back to the town. So yeah, no, that that's all included in that. Yes. Okay. I you include it in your cost. Essentially, it's not rung separate separately. It's included. Yeah. In your so, cost. save yours five dollars. That five dollars is a seven percent tax, which six and six and a quarter goes back to the state, and then the seventy five percent point seven five percent goes back to the town. Seventy five percent. That would be awesome. Yeah. For the town. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And does every <coughs> and again? I apologize for the question. Does every person? Whether you're nonprofit or not, still have to pay that meals tax. Yes. Okay. Can I ask Karen a question, Chair? Yeah. Do you see that meals tax reported and you look at that in the finance report or it's so small it's not an issue? It's it's not something I I mean I know it gets it's included in the numbers, but I don't pay that close attention. So I would have to go to another department. Okay. I have to go to Becky yeah. to find you can out. Go to the department, uh, DLS. They'll have it all listed there as well. Mm -hmm. DLS. DLS. Yep, Department of Local Services, and I'll be there. Okay. Yeah, it's paid to the state, and then I don't know how they disperse yeah. it. And then back it comes to back. Us. Yeah. I was going to say it's lumped in revenue on the revenue side, yeah. which I think generally you can see it on DLS. It's all there. I just never pay attention. Yeah. So, okay. so here, just to give you a reference, in September yeah. we received just over twenty thousand. December. Uh, so I believe it's quarterly, uh, 21,000. In March, it was down um, to uh, just under 13,000. So we've received uh, 55,000 so far. But you, for the year for meals tax. Right. Then I, I understand, and I don't know, I don't think it's a privilege. I understand that KP's is going to be opening up soon. So if they are, I'd love to see that meal tax come in too then. That's mm -hmm. a bonus. So, so that would be great. <clears throat> Tamika, do you need each date to be included in no, the you can just a as blanket? A slate if you want. Okay. Yeah, you can just say as presented. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to everyone all set? Yep. I'm good. I'd like to make a motion to approve the one day liquor licenses from Milk Room Brewing Company. Ten dates for the common, uh, concerts on the common as uh, written. Second. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Roll call, Harry. Sackman, I. Matson, I. Ledger, I. Yeah, I. Wait, I. I wish you some great days. Thank you very much, Lloyd. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, Ann. Sorry. No worries. Moving on, we have a surplus designation for the 2006 Chevy Impala um, town vehicle. Austin, I think you have a little bit of an update on this, right? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So the beautiful... 2006 Chevy and Paul, that's behind <laughs> the annex. Um, I believe that was allocated to the town administrator's office. I haven't driven it once. I hear it's got a lot of issues. Um, so um, that used to be a public safety vehicle. Um, and uh, 
on acquiring some new vehicles for the public safety fleet that was transferred to um, general government use. However, um, I received uh, some communications from uh, Department of Energy Resources, particularly the Green Communities Division. Um, they, they noticed that in our annual Green Communities Report, and they noticed that it was a vehicle that was over their policy for fuel efficiency standards. Um, it's, a, it's an older vehicle that isn't very fuel efficient, essentially. So um, I believe that this vehicle is no longer serving a, a useful purpose for town government. Really, no one drives it. Uh, it's got a lot of issues. So um, I'm asking the board to declare this vehicle surplus for the purposes of uh, selling in a public auction. Um, it's a, there's a platform I've used in previous communities that has been great. Uh, we don't pay anything. Essentially, the, the buyer pays the uh, associated buyer fee. Uh, we just do the posting, and <coughs> put it out there, and um, prospective bidders can pay whatever they want for this wonderful vehicle. <laughs> um, and then hopefully we can use that fund, uh, those funds um, to at some point acquire a new vehicle for general government use as well. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, it, it, it goes into the general purpose fund? Yes. Okay. And it'll probably be certified as free cash eventually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is there um, need for a replacement vehicle? No. However, I think you know if you were to maybe do a um, you know analysis of what you know what we're paying to reimburse employees versus you know if we acquire a vehicle uh, for them to use. Um, right now, I don't think that there's a need. However, there's a lot of grant funds. Uh, grant funding out there for uh, for municipalities to uh, to acquire new vehicles, mm -hmm. um, especially this particular uh, grant program. Uh, they're putting a lot of money out there for more fuel efficient vehicles. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm not suggesting we we replace it yet. Um, but uh, I think at some point mm -hmm. that may be something that we'll take a look at. Okay. Are they are the grants? Would they cover it 100 percent, or is it like a matching grant? Not 100%, but they'll cover, uh, uh, it depends on the vehicle um, and the fuel efficiency. So it's a sliding scale, if you will. But okay. um, certainly it helps. Anything helps. I will say as well, though, the new vehicles that uh, public safety is acquiring are within that fuel efficient standard. So even if we do what was done here, um, you know, even if we were to get an old you know, old cruiser, mm -hmm. that would allow us to be in compliance. But this, this one is, is yeah. certainly not. For the chair, no, I, I hope we're able to get some grants for town vehicles. You shouldn't have to beat up in your own, own car. And like the people that work for the senior center, we've talked about that in the past, where they, they put a lot of effort and time in their own vehicles, you know, donating meals and stuff. So it'd be nice to get a, a town vehicle that can yeah. handle some of these roads, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That would be nice to... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious, I, I'm, I think it's a little off topic, but um, is has there been any anything done to compare reimbursing staff for use of their own vehicles versus what it costs to purchase a new vehicle. Plus, I'm assuming there's insurance and everything that goes along with multiple people driving a town car. Yeah, so I don't think that analysis has been done yet. Certainly, I think um, that could be something that, that would be done if I'm presenting a proposal to the to the board or, or within a budget, um, presenting the analysis and why we think it would be prudent to invest in, in a new okay. vehicle. So for right now, we're just looking to unload this one until yep. Just asking to de de declare a surplus okay. um, for the purposes of disposing. Okay. Alright, I make a motion to <clears throat> designate the town vehicle 2006 Chevy Impala surplus. Is there a second? Second. second. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I think Gary will miss that car as all well. Roll call. Paul, you're. Madison, A. Aye. I'm glad you're aye. Yeah, I'm aye. Whiteman, aye. We can tell Gary that it's going live and he can win on it. Moving on, we have a correspondence a memo from the um, Finance Committee regarding the sewer transportation legal matter. Um, I will read it so it's for the record. Okay, yeah, it, and if anybody's interested, it's included in the packet on okay. the select board packet on the website. Okay. Um, this is from FinCom to the Board of Public Works, select board. Um, 
On April 26, 2022, the Worcester Superior Court affirmed a jury verdict in the amount of $14.6 million in the favor of the town of Holden against the city of Worcester for excessive <coughs> wastewater transport charges. While the committee understands that legal counsel advised the town of Rutland not to pursue legal action, the town has also been financially impacted by these excessive charges at a detriment to our water and sewer ratepayers. The Finance Committee respectfully requests that the Board of Public Works Select Board further investigate possible action on the matter in an effort to recoup lost funds on behalf of both the town and the residents. Sincerely, Alex Mollett, Chair of Finan Finance Committee. Um, I just wanted to address that we received this. We hear FinCom and a lot of residents' feedback and complaints reiterate that this was a Select Board decision to not engage years ago 10 years ago, and that it's taken under advisement and um, is on the radar of um, our town department heads. And thank them for sending that along. To the chair? Yeah. Uh, would you like to make a comment where we stand at this point? Um, all I can say is, you know, we, I think... Um, I think Joe Buckley was probably the most informed DPW director in the region on this matter, and he, he gave me a lot of information and, and connected me with um, some of the relevant parties. And I will say that um, the town has done a lot of work to make sure that we are um, protecting ourselves for any possible future um, involvement on this matter. Um, but I think we're certainly looking at this case between you know the the holding case and the verdict, um, and some of the moves that we've made in the past. I think are in response to that. Um, what I can say is I think this problem is a lot bigger than the town of Rutland, the town of Holden, city of Worcester. Um, I do believe that we'll have to explore if we haven't already um, some relief from our state delegation as well as possibly the governor's office on this. Um, I think more detailed conversation mm -hmm. would likely, uh, the best venue for that would be executive session to talk about this. Okay. But I can say we're certainly looking at this. Thank you. Um, next, I wanted to see if we could agree on a um, date for the 20, our new select board 2023-2024 <coughs> select board goals and objectives. Um, I had proposed doing um, one of our off Monday night meetings um, in June, just so we can do it before everybody disperses for summer vacation. Um, but I wanted input from the board. Um, also, Austin's been with us for a month and a half now, and we should really do goal setting and everything to, to assist Austin for <coughs> Personally, I have no objection to the dates that you proposed. I'm okay with those. Mm -hmm. yeah, likewise. Would you the 5th or the 19th? 19th would probably be better because that's technically oh, a holiday, you know what? right? I just realized we can't meet because that's it's a holiday. a holiday. Yeah, I apologize. It just dawned on me. I was going to say yeah. just as soon as June I was going to pull yeah, up my right. yep. calendar. <clears throat> um, can I just inquire yeah. as to is there a reason why we can't do it on a regular Monday. So, in the past, it's been a a full. You know, we've allocated two time. two and a half okay. hours of that, and okay. really kind of do more brainstorming, goal setting, um, in a little bit more of a relaxed kind of roundtable, um, conversation, um, mm -hmm. to then pick out the overarching themes. Um, it makes it easier Wednesday and Thursday nights this time of year tend to be quieter for meetings as well. So there's usually space available yeah. if it didn't work for everybody. I mean, if you want to shoot for the fifth, I guess. What year are you shooting for, Tom? I guess okay. the fifth. I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I mean, would it, I don't know my son's on, schedule yet, but on the fly, <clears throat> would a Wednesday or a Thursday work better for for people instead of the fifth? Yeah. Um. I um, can't do next week for either of those, but then the rest. Um, Thursdays <coughs> not good for me. Okay. Thursdays would probably be better. Could we look at Thursday the fifteenth or the twenty second? The twenty second is the last week of school. I think what yeah, you said's done. Be, so. 
15th would be tough. It's my anniversary. <laughs> you want to hang out with us? In three years. <laughs> well, I'll try Congratulations. To, is, 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 does anyone have a problem with the 5th? You, uh, you, you wouldn't want to not be there. <laughs> It'd be the last anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I can do June 5th. All right. So June 5th. June 5th is a Monday? Yep. Okay. Next Monday. Madam Chair? That would be yes. next Monday. Sorry. Uh, just, um, I'd, I'd like to <coughs> solicit also any ideas from town departments they have for potential goals for the board to consider if, yeah. if the board would agree to that. Oh, okay. I would definitely be amenable to having that be a two-way street rather than for sure. So do you think a week is enough time to, to reach out to them? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll send something out uh, tonight or tomorrow morning and uh -huh. whatever I have, but also if you're um, setting a second date to kind of finalize things that may allow for okay. additional time as well. Sounds good. So maybe we can look then to having a second date the end of June to to finalize, depending on how feedback goes from how our actual meeting goes, or we can finalize them at a regular scheduled meeting, maybe. Where would we be meeting? I will try to reserve this room. If this it's room? Available. Yep, I'll, I'll reach out and confirm via email, um, but I'll try to reserve this room first, and if not, I'll get one of the other two rooms. May I make a suggestion? I would like to sit in a chair at a table where I can see everybody and no, relax and enjoy. So one of the table. other rooms. Yeah. Peter usually sets up the tables if you remember, like when oh, we he does? This. Yeah. Remember yeah. we did the joint meeting with CIPC oh, and we yeah, sat yeah, down you, here. It can be done. Okay. Yeah. Well, Paul would know. Okay. And I, I think mean, in the past we've gotten like sandwiches or pizza or something and kind of done it a, a <coughs> less formal work like really a working yeah that's meeting. what I mean yeah sure. yep so okay so we'll uh June 5th got it um the next is just um I wanted I probably should have included this in my chair updates but um I think going forward if anybody has f agenda items that they know in the top of their head that have come out of this meeting or just would like to discuss we can vocalize that now at a meeting and give staff time to to do any sort of research and everything and just get it on Tamika keeps a running list of of everything that we need to discuss or or relook at or anything um so in general in meetings I'll try to hold space to have that as well as any conversation um that the board feels they they would like to have so if anybody has any anything now um but just know going forward that we'll <coughs> have that space I will say the only item I have I think should be an executive session in terms of town business. Yeah, I mean, through the chair, the only thing I, I mean, th what we've been talking about right along, try looking into grants for a possible upgrade of fields, uh, you know, upgrading, giving the senior center what they need to be ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, vehicles, I think that's important. I think the senior center getting a van or something like that so that the volunteers have some they're not using all not only their time but their their vehicle and gas and everything else i think that'd be nice um <clears throat> and then i think we i don't know if this is appropriate for right now we had talked about possibly up on main street and maple helping traffic a little bit um is that something down the road yeah, down the road. Okay, okay. It's been an ongoing discussion for some time. Oh, I'm sure it has. I'm yeah. sure it has. Long before I was, I'm sure. It has. <laughs> Trust me. Something, if we can, yeah, but it's only going to get worse, so. I think, the I think Karen's got enough so traffic on Palma right, Karen? Actually, can't hear me. Oh, no, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, that was pretty much. I'm kind of along those lines. I'm, I'm curious if there's been any discussion on anything to do with the 122 Pleasantdale intersection at Four Corners. Yeah, that's coming a tough this one coming this way tonight, I literally just saw another accident car over on. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough intersection. So that's yeah. another one. I'd be curious if there's yeah. been more conversations on yeah. doing something because that's well, that's bad. more of a safety issue yes. as opposed to I think Main Street and Maple. It's just traffic. It's yes. just keeping traffic True. going. Yeah. It's safety too. Yeah. yeah. True. You got to keep traffic going. Oh, oh, one more thing. I think you said it was the police chief. Can we bring up the issue of, and again, I don't even know if this is the appropriate time, but the issue of the entranceway where people turn on Pomagasa to get into the church? Yep. That's getting worse and worse. As traffic's built up, people are just stacking up. Is it possible to maybe make it so we can make it a one-way from the other side? 
if he would, if that's doable. You're or, talking about the library? The yeah, library? the library a little bit. It's so bad out there now. Okay. I mean, everything in that intersection is a nightmare. <clears throat> so, roundabout. Particularly Duncan. Roundabout. Doors. That'd be the best, yeah. Yeah. And they're popping up everywhere. They're doing them. Yeah. Small towns. I, I apologize. I had to step out real quick to take a phone call, and I missed what you had said. I heard you say executive session, but I didn't hear the rest of it. Oh, I just said the issues that I was talking about should be talked about in an executive session. Yeah, Harry, if you um, if you want to connect offline and we can determine which purposes for executive session we'll enter in. For the executive session? Yep. Sure. Okay. I have a question. That, that I've with Gary for so many times and Joe. Wood Studio, the ramp. Mm -hmm. Has anything been done? Has anybody moved so we can use the building again? So Austin and I talked briefly about it. I think, um, and that's the big concern, is the accessibility, accessibility into the building. Correct. So, yeah, it's on the radar. I thought I had heard that we have supplies. We were just waiting for a go-ahead for somebody to complete the work. I hadn't heard that one. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> I, I don't recall hearing that. Um, however, uh, I took a walk over there as well, and that's the first thing I noticed. So, um, but it looks like the space is a beautiful space that should be utilized. And if that's you know one thing that we need to uh, to utilize and take care of, I do know that the board allocated some uh, funding for ADA compliance at the at the community center, um, and uh, there may be some funds available for us to to do some work. It's a relatively, I mean, it's a it's a wood ramp. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that may be something that we can do internally, and if there's some, some funds available to buy some supplies, that may be something mm -hmm. we can take care of without, uh, you know, having to go out and contract it out. Um, if I may, I know there was also talk about possibly connecting the bay path yeah. to see if maybe their students could do it. Yeah. I think some of the concern was the ramp itself, but also the way the door opens, and I'm not sure even if it's the width of the door, but definitely the way the door opens, it's not, I think, not friendly if you have accessibility issues. Mm -hmm. or, her, her concerns. So, mm -hmm. um, I, think I uh, just a word uh, based on oversight. Uh, if the amount of money is going to be over ten thousand dollars, and it's going to be a five-year plan, it needs to, and it's going to last more than five years. It does need to go through the CIPC. That's the criteria that the town has set up in the bylaw. I don't think it will. I don't think a ramp's going to cost ten grand. So. <laughs> why, why don't you think that? So, I don't know. Everything costs more than ten grand now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think we have any other correspondence. We covered it under new business. Um, I. Oh yeah. I have a moment. I would just like to take a, a moment to say thank you very much to the fire brigade and to the Boy Scouts and their Eagle Project. They did one heck of a job cleaning up the front end of the cemetery and making all that looking very nice and neat and clean yeah, once did. again. Yeah, and I really, really think that, you know, they put a lot of time and effort into everything that they've done over there so far and deserve a big thank you. Absolutely. If you could pass that on, appreciate it. Um, any other business? Randy left, though. Randy? No, he's not here. Um, our future me meeting dates are listed here. We also have the June fifth one that will be our goal set um, goal um, workshop. Um, I will entertain a motion to um, enter into executive session to adjourn from executive session to not return to public to open meeting. Adjourn directly from. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I'd like to make a motion to adjourn at this time to executive session. Can you read the piece? Which one? Uh, it would be to discuss trade secrets or confidential, competitively sensitive or other proprietary information. And or it, trade secrets does the municipality have? That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a legal Do term. We do we need the additional? Yeah, yep, and to adjourn from executive session. Oh, yeah, uh, and to adjourn from. And to adjourn from executive session. Yeah, so we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns? We'll call Harry. Second and I. That's an I. Ledger I. Galvin I. Whiteman I.
<clears throat> Thank you all for coming and sticking with us.